Okay, First Chronicles chapter 16, we'll start right with verse 1. So they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it. And they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. Le Leviticus 7, 11 through 37. And when David had made an end of offering the burnt offering and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord, it would be Jehovah. And he dealt to every one of Israel, both men and women, to every one a loaf of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flag and a wine. And there's that bread and wine again. That's when the ark has come into Jerusalem. When Jesus came in Jerusalem, he said, go prepare for me in the upper room. Came on the ass. And he appointed certain of the Levites, not just any. Now remember, priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests, to minister. And a lot of men take that, oh, I'm a minister. And they don't do anything for the people. It's a great title. And yet they don't know what the Bible word is. Before the ark of the Lord. And to record. All right. They record things. They're recorders. God's a great recorder. You find it in Numbers. You find it in Chronicles. And to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. Well, look at that. There are people pointing. Hey, God, thank you. Anna had pointed herself in the Gospel of Luke. I'm here for prayers. You got a prayer. And it never says that she is high above anybody. She's just there. And people came to her for prayer. And Asaph, we mentioned him before. We found him in the, in the Psalms. Again, the Psalms 50, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, and 83. Those Psalms are directed by Asaph, the chief. There he is. He's the chief of all the musicians. Notice people want this utopia kind of world with no leaders. Everybody does what they want to do. Well, in the book of Judges, the Danites found such a people. I forget who they're called. And they dwelt carelessly. And they had no magistrate in the land. And they lost and died. And they were taken over. And then you had the establishment of the Roman Catholic Church with a priest called Father. Bum, 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 bum. Same chapter. They stole uh, Micah's images and priests and everything. What kind of religion you got? And Asaph the chief, next to him, Zechariah, Jael, Shimon, Jehiel, and Mathaniah, and Elib, and Benaniah, and Obadim. I wonder if that's the same one where the ark was. That his house was being, you know, here's the ark, and Uzzah put this forth, his hand touched it, pfft, he's dead. David said, oh, man, God, what'd you do this for? I fear God. Let's put it in this house of Obadiah. I don't know if it's the same one. This name seems to be a popular name in the Bible. Be, if, it, if it is, he would have great relationship to the ark. That was in my house. Oh, you should see what the Lord did. He'd be praising God. When that ark was in my house, man, you won't believe it. You got to wonder, did he give up a little fuss when David came and got it? Or did he say, David, this, is, this doesn't belong here. What kind of attitude did Obadiah have? Was it good to the Lord or was it fletch? I don't know. If this is the same Obadiah, I think he would have a good spirit of David because David would not put a covetous man in, in this position. If it's the same one. And Jehu with psalteries and harps. That's where people get, we're going to go to heaven, we're going to have harps. You, you do find it in Revelation. Angels, there are mentioned angels with harps. That don't say Christians. People read too much in the Bible. Maybe we will have harps, so. We'll be singing, glorifying God. I, I, if, if that's the case, and I'll say once, I'll be able to play an instrument. I know one day I'm going to sing perfectly. And Asaph made a sound with a cymbal. So not only did Asaph sing, not only did he sing, not only was he in charge, but he played the cymbals. It's kind of interesting. So the guy took part. 
in the service. He didn't have an office and sat at his desk with his feet up, marking my Bible here, and have a Coca Cola and gave orders to everybody else. He was there on the scene at the tabernacle. Benaiah, uh, yes, may sound similar. Benaiah also and Jes Jehazir, the priests. All right, those would be Levites, but priests with trumpets. Ooh, look at that! Even the priests had a job in the singing. Continually before the Ark of the Covenant of God, uh, and that, I would assume that they're not all in the holy place. But then again. It would be funny, I mean, let's say you're a stranger, you're, I can't say the Queen of Sheba because I have son, but let's say you're a stranger, you're a Gentile, you come into Jerusalem, you're trying to sell spice for you, know, and you just hear this music, this glorious, wonderful, loud music, and you're looking around, you can't see it. Before the Lord. Before the Ark. It could be the whole tabernacle, and David's just putting that whole thing into one. But they're definitely not in the Holy of Holies. Definitely. David ain't going to mess doing that ark wrong again. So, chapter 16, verse 7. Down to... I forget where it leaves off now. Well, actually, down to, yeah, down to 36. We're going to go to Psalms 105. But it cuts off in Psalms 105. Psalms 105, and I, I thought we were in Psalms there, does not include verses 7 to 36. I forget where, I think it cuts around 22, 23, but we're going to go read that. And pretty much it's all the same, with a few exceptions I will point out. But Psalms 105, you understand what I'm saying? 105, okay? Then on that day, David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. So here's a psalm. And he hands it over to Asaph. Now this is not Asaph's hymn, uh, psalm. Chapter 50, then 73 to 83. This is not a, a Thanksgiving psalm of Asaph. It's given to Asaph. Why is it given to him? Because he's in charge. Asaph, here, I don't know if David wrote the music, or here's just the words. In our Bible, it says, David recalls God's miracles for Israel. God recalls that. And I don't know if David, and I say, I don't, I know he wrote the words. I don't know if he wrote the little notes. Maybe it's Asaph's job to put it in. But I'm trying to, also trying to say roundabout way is your song. In the middle of your King James Bible is a hymnal. And when you run to your hymnal, there's a lot of wrong in your hymnals. Now, God inspired the book of Psalms. He did not inspire your hymnal. You have no business singing those carols that are wrong and against God, that put things in the Bible that's not true. You have no business singing a, a, a battle hymn in the Republic that has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Saving the black people from slavery. That does not belong. And you don't have nothing to do singing America the Beautiful. I just turned off many people now. Purple Mountains. Majesty. From sea to sunny sea. Idiots. It's Atlantic Ocean and it's the Pacific Ocean. That's not a sea. It's stupid. It's stupid. So here we go. Verse 8 starts Psalm 105. Give thanks. There you go. David was just having an anger problem with, with God three months ago. Give thanks unto the Lord. Now let me, uh, let's go to verse 36 real quick. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. So what we're reading, verse 8. David is standing before the people like Solomon is going to pray before the people. Like Solomon is going to bless the people and bless the God. David is standing amongst the people and delivering what he just wrote. 
or, or, As Asaph, yeah, here's his hymn. And they get out the trumpets, they get out the cymbals, they get out the harps, they get out the psalteries, and this may be sung. Maybe by David. Or maybe by the musicians now set up before the ark. And if this is the musicians and the singers singing this psalm, Psalm 105 is the first psalm to be sung when the ark is seated where God said, I will put my name among the tribes of Israel, which would be Judah in the city of Jerusalem, the city of David. And the first psalm, the first thing to God when the ark is now seated where it should be set, is going to be moved to the temple when, the, when Solomon builds the temple. And when it gets in that temple, the staves come out. And that ark of the covenant will be raptured before Babylon comes in and sacks Jerusalem. Because you will find it in heaven. And I don't care if you're a Nazi. I don't care if you're playing with a Chewbacca. You're not going to find that ark. On the earth. And when you see, I see it on the internet, oh, they found the ark, it's in Africa, it's in Ethiopia. No, it's in heaven. Read Revelation. So the very first words of this hymnal brought to God where he's now said, I'm going to settle my place in Israel is give thanks unto the Lord. That says a lot. If there's anybody who would not have to give thanks to God, would be David. That guy was on the run how many years and not had the throne? That guy has been battling with his own family, killing each other, fighting each other. And you say, oh, you, you, you sons of uh, Zarella, or whatever the name was. My sisters, my mother's sister. <laughs> you, my nephew, I, you guys are driving me nuts. Running from Saul. Oh, why are you coming after me? Make a flea in the wilderness. Jonathan, why do you keep going back to your father? Stay with me. I need you. I need comfort. God, you just took very, I mean, you just took us and you dropped him dead. And David's song says, Give thanks unto the Lord. My wife just yelled at me. My wife is just bitter and angry against me because I was worshiping you, God. What the heck with her? And a lot of people got to realize, you know, I, I heard a man say, well, if your wife doesn't want to go to the ministry and all that, you, you don't go. David told Micah, you stay. I'm going to go praise the Lord. And there he is. She hates him in his heart. Been a lot of ministers like that going out and their, and their wives haven't been right. And still the fact that he says, thank the Lord. Call upon his name. Oh, well, his name is not Allah. His name is not Mary, not Tamaz, Tabus, and uh, whatever you have. Make known his deeds among the people. That's a testimony. And I was in a couple churches where they would have a testimony night. And you would have to say, I swear you had to say it because somebody would, have, would avoid the rule. Your testimony is about God and about Jesus Christ alone. What God has done for you. And somebody will go off. But when you heard something throughout the week. That week. What God has done to some people. It's like wow. Keep your notes. In your Bible. In your prayer book. Or another note. But write down dates. Of things you ask for God. And write down things that God has done for you. And go back and see. How wonderful God is. And there's a wonderful hymn. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. That's what David's saying. When you get down in the dumps and you get, oh, God, everything, and you look back, you think back, oh, look, oh, yeah, look at you got me out of that trouble. You got me out of that problem. David has many, numerous times that has been recorded of his life. Oh, God, you took care of me. How wonderful. That one time, they're going around the mountain. As a mountain, what is it? He'll be going around the mountain when he comes. Him and Saul just go around and around and around that mountain. And Saul can't get him. David takes a break. Here comes Jonathan. Hi, hi David. I know you're going to be the king. My father knows you're going to be the king. Count your many blessings. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. 
Now that's what they're doing. All right, sing unto him. Glory, okay, page number 587, page 120, whatever, okay? When's the last time your church ever sing a hymn, a, a song? Now we have in our hymn uh, at the church, we have versions of Psalms 23, but man, that's so out of whack, that's so perverted, I close the book. It didn't say sing your versions of the Psalms, because if you do that, you're changing the Bible. You have a modern hymnal. But we can't have an NIV. We can't have an RSV. We can't have the modern Bibles. In there. We're King James only. All right, open up this, this Psalm that has been changed by man, and let's sing it to the glory, and nobody does anything. Sing psalms unto him. Not the modern music today. We sing that you can put your girlfriend's name on it and sign your name at the bottom. You would never tell the difference. Sing unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous work. Talk. Speak about God. Use your voice. Bible says with the heart man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth confessions made unto salvation. Listen, when you're witnessing to the people... All you're doing is just telling people how God has been so wonderful in your life. How you got saved. That's all it is. You can, I mean, you can't shut up Monday morning when your sports team has run that big champion, whatever that final episode is. You can't shut up about that. You, you can't open up your mouth about the great testimonies God has done for you. Something wrong. Glory ye in his holy name. A name above any name. Acts 4.12 says, There is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. There's one name. Let the heart, with the heart man believes unto righteous, of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. You're supposed to be happy with the Lord. Rejoice evermore, Paul says. Look at Paul. He stole from Peter. Glad Peter didn't copyright it. I mean, he stole from David. Glad David didn't copyright it. Seek the Lord and his strength. I take iron pills. I go work out. I lift weights. That ain't going to do you good. You'll be the most muscular man in the graveyard. And you won't have power to lift that grave. You won't have power to lift that lid. You won't have power to lift that dirt. But when the day comes and the Lord calls out, if you're if you're a Christ, you're going to come somehow popping out of that grave. If you're not of Christ, you're going to be popping out of that grave, showing up the great white throne judgment. I don't even, maybe not trembling. More and more I read about that rich man in hell. He didn't tremble. But let the strength be the Lord. Seek his face continually. That's kind of interesting. I don't know. We may not be able to finish this Psalms 105. What did God tell Moses about his face? No man can see my face, but he'll die. I'm not quoting that verse. In order to see God's face, you've got to be right with God. David's speaking to people who are going to be right with God. Seek his face. That holy face. That made that Moses' face glow. And don't tell me David didn't know about that. That Moses had to put a veil on his face, except for when he went into the temple. There's only one way to see the face of God is through you being holy and righteous, and that's through Jesus Christ. And all the people that saw God's face for 33 and a half years and still went off into hell. You know, I, I have people early, I haven't heard anybody say this in a long time, but if you show me Jesus, I will believe. Five thousand. Men were fed by Jesus Christ. They had to see his face. And how many were at his death at his cross? His mother, a few women, and John. The Bible says 400, or the 400 or 500, and one or two people saw his resurrected body. Out of 5,000. And then there was a 4,000, 9,000 men at least. Not counting the women and children. They saw the face of Jesus. The Pharisees and Sadducees, Nicodemus, came up. Uh, uh, the one that gave him his, his tomb. Huh? Joseph. Joseph of Aramea. 
You mean, you, I mean, out of all those Pharisees, Sadducees, the scribes that angered because of Jesus, you can only name a few on your hand? David says, seek that faith. Wait till the day we see that faith. Where we're absent from the body, present with the Lord, and we're alive, we get raptured, and boom, there he is, standing there in, in outer space. As we go by, go kick those rovers and NASA satellites and all that, mess up their television. Who's the Lord will let us do that? Or if we kick these satellites out of the way, come on. Continually. So we lose fact of Jesus' faith. Paul says, set towards the mark. And we go off that road all the time. Read Pilgrim's Progress. Man, he sees that holy city. What's he doing at Doubting Castle? Man, he has his eyes set for the gate. And he's over at the, at the mountain of Sinai and it's going to fall on him. He's set forth. He's in the slaw of despair. He set his face and he's falling asleep at the arbor. I do that. I get my eyes off Jesus. I'm not saying that to be pleased either. Remember his marvelous works. There you go. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Keep going back to Calvary. Remember who you were before you were saved. Remember what he did the day you got saved. And hopefully you've done some good after you're saved. Remember his marvelous works that he, God, has done. His wonders and judgments of his mouth. Now remember, he's talking to the nation of Israel, and God has just been wonders and signs and miracles and greatness. O ye seed of Abraham, I mean, excuse me, I, uh, Israel, in Psalms 105 it says Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen one. Oh, you mean not America? America thinks that we're the, we're the great chosen one. Uh-uh. Israel and Jacob. They're the same. And his children, there are 12 tribes. Those are the chosen ones. And you know where you get the invitation? We're Jehovah Witnesses. We're the 144,000. You know who the 144,000? They're the 12 tribes of Israel, minus Ephraim and Dan. So you know what Jehovah Witnesses say according to that verse? We're the chosen ones. Is Jesus God? No. Well, then go to hell. You're stealing from the Bible. Do you think God appreciates you stealing from the ones that he loves? You know, the Jehovah Witnesses need to go meet with the Mormons and find out that their genealogies don't go back to Isaac in, in uh, Israel and the 12 tribes. There you go. Get, get those two cults together and find out who they're not. You know, the Mormons do these ancestries and all that, and they come from people in North America that were never here. And you're going to spit in a bottle and pay whatever you pay to find, to, to find out who you are? Read the Book of Mormon. There are names in there that have never been found. He is the Lord our God. Look at David saying that. His judgments are in all the earth. That's interesting. Death. Weather phenomenon, someone getting caught in a, in a wicked deed, someone getting caught doing wrong. A judge says you're guilty, you're innocent, and whatever the fines are, that, that's all the judgment of God. When you, I mean, I know David didn't have police cars back then, but when you get pulled over by the police department, that's the judgment of God. Romans 13. But. Uh, excuse me, be ye mindful. That's the first time that word shows up. And I skip up in verse 12, the marvelous. That's the first time that word shows up. Marvelous. The first time marvelous shows up is works. First, be mindful. All way of his covenant. That's Jewish. That's Jewish. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Even of the covenant which he made with Abraham. Abraham. And of his oath unto Isaac. Abraham, Isaac, and we just read early in 13, Jacob, 12 tribes. There's no Arabians. There's no Ishmaelites. 
Go ring the door of the United Nations and the presidency office of the White House and Russia and England. Ring their doorbells to say God's people in that land belongs to the inhabitants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the 12 tribes. And if you curse them people, God's going to curse you. If I ever had the opportunity to go before the United Nations and say, hey, you have 45 minutes to preach. I will spend half the time preaching about Jesus Christ and salvation. And I will preach the other half the time that that land belongs to Israel. Leave it alone. And I would close it. You need to believe on the Jewish Messiah that came of the tribe of Judah, born of a Jewish woman that's a virgin. And any other religions and your rejection of that Messiah, you go to hell. If I ever had opportunity. I can imagine what other preachers would get up there and preach. Little puppet shows and all that. So it's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he confirmed the same to Jacob for a law. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant. He assured it in Jacob, saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan. Put that to the United Nations. The lot of your inheritance. God says that land of Canaan, it's Israel. We have moved our embassy into Jerusalem, and we are now trying to make Palestine a state. And then when uh, one of the Bushes, I forget which one, when he did something against Israel, we called it the perfect storm. They even made a movie about it. If we go ahead and make Palestine a state and we can start going against Israel, you watch out. I will curse them that curse you. And we'll get worse of a curse because we call ourselves a Christian nation. And do we have a church on every corner? Oh, yes, we do. We got Catholic. We got Protestant churches. You got in California schools, you got prayer rugs, and you you pray to the east, and that's not the God of the Bible. You got babies being killed. And when ye were but few, few, how few? A man and a woman over age that could not produce any children. All right? God said a miracle. All right, you're gonna get birth. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord. You're going to name that boy Isaac. Laughter. Hi, Abraham. How are you doing? Good. Where's the wife? Well, she's in the tent. Well, you know, in, in nine months, she's going to have a baby. <laughs> Abraham? Yes, Lord. <laughs> Why is your wife laughing? Well, yes, you did. You want to make it even worse? Okay. They have a baby. Isaac. They named him Laughter. Why did you name him Laughter? You have to tell the testimony of the whole story. Okay, God, uh, Abraham says, listen, I've got to find a good bride. I've got to find the right bride for my, for my son. I ain't dare going to send him. I'll send my chiefest and wonderful, most godly servant that went to the well and prayed, say, Lord, God, it has to be the wet fleece on the ground and it has to be the dry fleece on the ground for this woman. He finds the right woman. She's a godly woman. She's, she works hard. He brings her over there and we find out, guess what? She's barren. Then you find out she gets pregnant, she's got twins, and they're battling it out in her womb. And it's surprising one of them, if not all, did not survive. Few. Few. And then 12 sons. And then one of, the, one of those sons, is, you know, he, he stripped of his coat, and he sold off to Egypt to go whatever, whatever to be at. Man, those boys were wicked. I'm surprised they all didn't get killed, each other few even a few let's see what he said look at god when you were but a few even a few <laughs> and strangers in it abraham was a stranger in the land isaac was a stranger in the land there were more canaanites than there were abernites and there's no abraham i'm just saying and when they went from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people he suffered no man to do them wrong, yet he reproved kings for their sake. 
uh, Abimelech and Pharaoh. That's Abraham. And then Isaac has a few troubles with uh, Gerir. And God took care of the matters. Now, verse 22 is interesting because I've heard, I've heard preachers say this. Hasn't this been all Jewish? Okay. I wasn't in a temple service. I wasn't in a synagogue. I was in a Baptist church. Touch not my anointed. When I was asking the guy a question about a problem in the church, oh, touch not your anointed. I'm anointed of God. Don't. Who do you think you are? And do my prophets no harm. Just write down that's Jewish people. And God said that to the nation. Better leave Abraham. He told one, he says, listen, you, you know, Abraham's a prophet. You, you better have him pray for you. Better not you better not do anything to Abraham. Don't, don't mess with Isaac. One day Jacob's on the run. He's on his way home and, and Laban, his father-in-law, takes a little nap. The guy says, you better not touch that boy. That's mine. And Jacob was a prophet. And then Jacob's boys, they go into the city and they they, they, they mess over. They deceive the inhabitants of the land because they slept with their sister Dinah. And they, they deceive them. And they kill the entire town by telling, hey, listen, we'll, we'll have you to be circumcised. They're circumcised in their pain. They came and murdered the whole town. David's like, I mean, not David. Jacob's like, oh, man, we're going to be in trouble. They're going to kill us. And God prevented them. God put the fear of those nations to protect Jacob. Esau couldn't touch Jacob. You better not mess with Jacob. When it says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm, that goes to Israel today. Leave them alone. Bless them. Send them Bibles. Send them. If they mess with you, God will deal with you if it's the gospel. And they dealt with them all through the book of Acts, the Jews. We're messing with the prophets of God. But God said, don't you touch them. I don't even like doing Jew Jewish, Jewish jokes. Be very careful with that. I'm a jokester. Sing unto the Lord again. All the earth. All the earth. Jeremiah said, oh, earth, earth, earth. Right this man childless. To set forth the virgin birth. So when the earth doesn't sing, there is something wrong. But they'll hire music to block out the gospel. That's not the kind of singing God said. You'll give an account. Show forth from day to day his salvation. You should be able to tell somebody at least once a day, or when you see, you should be able to say, you know what? I'm saved by Jesus Christ. Something. Glory to God. Declare his glory among the heathen. That's us. You Jews are to go to, tell that to Peter, tell that to Jonah. You know what Jonah said? Is this boat going west? Yes, I'll pay anything. Peter, I want you to go with those men to a Gentile. Not me, Lord, I touch nothing unclean. I have not put nothing unclean in my lips. Will you get over there? I guarantee Peter, he went, but man, he was like kicking the dirt. Jonah was. It's supposed to be the Jews are going out to tell people about Jesus. Ready? Who first went out in the book of Acts to tell the Gentiles about Jesus? Oh, how's that one? The Jewish. Peter dealt with the, uh, the Gentiles. With Cornelius, Philip dealt with uh, the Ethiopian eunuch. Paul dealt with all. His ministry was half, supposed to be all, but my primarily to the Gentiles in their churches. That's a prophecy. Paul was obeying Psalms 105. Peter obeyed Psalms 105. His marvelous works among all nations. That's Paul. That's the two vis uh, uh, no, the two adventures of Paul. And what would be the wonderful works of God here? Jesus Christ suffered and died according to scriptures, was buried and arose again the third day according to scriptures. And did not Paul use the Old Testament because he didn't have no New Testament to deal with the Jews about who? Jesus, the Messiah. There's Paul right there. David is speak, David's a prophet speaking about the apostles going out and witnessing through the book of Acts. 
And listen, when he wrote Galatians on that, he's also writing the Jewish Galatians that are saved. Isn't that amazing? For great is the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital... All right, so the Gentiles got the word through Peter, James, and John, and Paul, correct? For the great is the Lord. That Lord would be also who, according to prophecy in the book of Acts? That would be Jesus. So go tell the Jehovah Witnesses to take a flying leap and belly flop into the lake of fire because Jesus is God. And I say that to the elders ones of Jehovah Witnesses who will not listen to reasoning of the scriptures. To those who are young and don't really know yet, I, I like to get some, I like you to meet some, I like you to deal with them, I like you to show them the Bible that their heart can be changed back over to the Lord. May who are in it and elderized in it, very little hope. Greatly to be praised, he is also to be feared above all gods. There's no fear of God today. And if you think there is, you have not been involved in any public ministry. You have not dared to put your job on the line to... to Speak about Jesus. I was fired from a job right around Halloween time. Speaking about Jesus with all the Halloween nonsense around. You can keep death, but you can't keep Jesus. That's kind of interesting. For all the gods of the people are idols. There you go. Some of those idols are men living. Some of those idols of men have died. The king of music. The king of racing. The king of this. I am king. <laughs> Sorry. I had to throw that one in there. Huh. For all the gods of the people are idols. They're a television program. Idol. There are men in music with the name idol. But the Lord made the heavens. You know what? You know what? What's my idol that your my God made it all? Your idol was made by man. The gods of the people are idols. The people made those idols. And God made the people. There it is. Glory and honor are his presence. So when we get the glory, what will there be? Glory and honor. To who? God. That's why the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother. Or not honor thy mother and father. Because if you can't honor your parents, you're not going to honor God. Strength and gladness are in his place. That's heaven. Heaven is glory, honor, strength, and gladness. Strength from what? We're not going to lift weights. We're not going to have no battles. Just to stand up always and not get a backache. To be ever standing and not have our feet say, oh, we're tired. Can I have a chair? Maybe forever we'll just raise our hands holy to God. Forever just to sing without losing breath. That's strength. Whatever we're going to do forever before God and His Son, Jesus Christ, we're not going to get tired. We're not going to get lame. We're not ever going to fail before God. How's that for strength? And it don't come in a bottle and it don't come at a, at a gym. I'm not making fun of gyms and all that, but let's, let's get right spiritually. Let's have our bodies spiritually right, right before we try to get our bodies right. Even Paul said that. Give unto the Lord. Oh. In the hymn says, give unto the Lord. And it's not just money, it's everything you've got. Maybe time. Maybe effort. Ye kindreds. That's the first time that word shows up. Kindreds. Of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Now how do you give God strength back? You endure it. Oh, my feet hurt. 
Go out there, because the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, if you go out and preach the gospel, God loves them feet. I know a guy's got very sore feet, very bad feet from diabetes. He goes out and holds his on, and he sticks to it. You're in a nursing home. You ain't done yet. You ain't dead yet. Do something. Even if the only thing you can do is you can pray, give strength to pray. That's what Anna did. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Oh, the name of Jesus. Of all the things that will not happen to me because of Jesus. That the name, there is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. The glory of the name of Jesus. Of all the rotten and wicked and vile and detestable things that will happen in hell will not happen to me. Ever. What a name. Bring an offering. Come before him, God. Worship the Lord. In the beauty of his holiness. That's heaven. No sin, no wickedness, and no devil in the in New Jerusalem. No moon, no sun. Fear before him. That's lacking today. All the earth. So when you got a public ministry and you're preaching about Jesus to believe on Jesus Christ, and they don't do that, they are disobeying the Bible. Fear before him, all the earth, the world, oh, everybody, and also shall be stable, that it be not moved. That's only in New Jerusalem, the new world, new earth. Let the heavens be glad. Let the earth rejoice. Let all men say among the nations, the Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice and all that therein. Wait to the millennium when those crops are just no weeds. That the only thing that the curse is on in the millennium is that serpent. Everything else, the curse has been removed. You will not have weeds in your garden in the, in the millennium. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out. And we don't, we're running out of time. You realize the Bible says the trees sing? The Bible speaks about the trees will clap their limbs. I believe that literal. In the land of cartoon land and television cartoons, they believe it's literal. I watched a movie one time about, about witches where the trees took their apples and were throwing it at them. And speaking. Many a time a cartoon, I had a tree speak before me and move his hand. I don't know what those trees are going to do, but I'm going to take that literal. I, it's possible. I mean, in the Bible, there were animals that spoke. Maybe the curse is that they don't. Maybe, maybe when Adam named those animals not under the curse, they ain't come up. I call you a bluebird. Thank you, Mr. Adam. I like that name. Last animal. I call you a platypus. What's that mean? Animals many parts. <laughs> okay. Be great. I don't know. There was a cartoon out there where, where the people would use animals to vacuum their houses and their showers and their garbage is full. Where did they get that idea from? There was a serpent in that garden before the fall. He knows something that we don't. You say, that's all. I don't know. But it would have been nice for Adam, uh, not under the curse, and Eve, and say, oh, Adam, I'd love to have a coconut right now. Well, we didn't make no ladders yet. Oh, don't worry. Mr. Giraffe? Yes. You get me one of them coconuts? Poof. He's big enough. Want some bananas? Get some monkeys. They'll charge you three bananas, but... What, what 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 else is there? I don't know. Yeah, it may be my utopia, but I, I, I think that's so. But I don't know. But look at all the things that are happening. Look at all the rejoicing. The fields are happy. The trees are clapping. The trees are singing. At the presence of the Lord. That is the millennium. There he is. 
He imagine when the Lord showed up in Genesis chapter 3, that Adam's hiding the trees like, uh-oh. That tree of knowledge, good and evil, if it could speak. God, I'm missing a fruit. I know. I don't know. You know, it's funny how the Bible says, Adam said, the woman, the woman said, the serpent. I don't ever read or record it, the serpent said anything else. But he did speak. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Wait a minute. And then the trees of the wood shall sing at the presence of the Lord. That's my land. Because he cometh to judge the earth. That's second advent. Look at the millennium and then look at the second advent in one passage. There it is. When he comes to judge the earth, he removed the lambs from the, from the goats and then you got perfect paradise. Still you'll have sinners there. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And say ye, save us, O God, our salvation. That's, so, that's Hosanna. Save us now. That's what Hosanna means. Save us, O God. Now that is not a reference to Jesus Christ. You would have to maybe, and I don't check him no more. You would have to probably mess with that verse in a modern Bible. Hosanna means save us now. God of our salvation. What does Jesus mean? Jehovah save. You cannot miss the application of say ye, save us now, O God of our salvation, Jesus, Hosanna. And gather us together. Jesus is going to do that the second advent. And deliver us from the heathen. There's the second advent. The heathen is going to be against those Jews, but there are a few nations that are lambs or sheep that will take care of the Jews, the Gentiles, but not many. That we may give thanks to thy holy name in the millennium and give glory to thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people said amen and praise the Lord. And we're going to stop there. Pick up. Not that we don't have time to do Psalms 105, but if you're to go read that, there it is.